Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We got some more bite-sized business advice for you. And this is going to be the most boring episode ever. And I say that because we're going to talk about systems and processes and numbers and accounting. But I promise you, I promise, don't check out yet. We're going to have a lot of fun because this is my jam. This is Christy's jam who is my amazing guest today. So before we go any further, we're going to talk about the Small Business Survival Guide. Christy, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. So most people don't like these topics yeah. and uh, they tend to check out. So <laughs> how, first of all, how did you, I want to know how you got into the operations systems and, and processes side of the business world because again, nobody likes it. So why are you here? Oh, I think I'm an anomaly. I think it's fun. And I have even friend groups like, what do you do? Why do you do this? <laughs> this is fun. I'm like, I promise you spend a lunch with me and you will, you will enjoy this too. But I started out in the accounting world, um, thinking I wanted to be a tax CPA, wrong personality for that because I <laughs> love people too much. <laughs> I, I actually interned in an accounting firm and they pulled me aside one time. They're like, uh, we noticed you listen to music while you work. Yeah, I do. I can't, I can't work in silence and just talking to people there. And then, and I remember when the internship was over, they're like, so we're not going to hire you. I hope that's okay. I'm like, really? It's okay. I know <laughs> I don't sit here. <laughs> so I kind of got pushed into more of an operational route that way. I come from a family business. I've been around a lot of people that own businesses all my life. I started working when I was about eight. Cause you know, when you work in a family business, basically free labor. Yeah, but labor. I would say you get free labor, but you get a, a great education from it. Mm -hmm. And I I worked in that and kind of just got to see how things work a little bit more. Fast forward a handful of years, I took a position at a manufacturing plant. They needed a controller slash CFO to run their organization. So I came in on that. And that's when I was introduced to the floor the warehouse and all of the operations that go out there and just watching things and watching people and how they worked and thinking, well, there's gotta be a better way to do something and putting all of those pieces together and what could we try? And I'll tell you the part that's a pain and I'm sure you have this and I'm sure listeners have this with whatever your skill set is. Once you see something, you can't unsee it. And then everywhere you go, you see this. So it's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that question is probably the foundational question for every operations nerd. It's just like there's got to be a better way to do this, right? Yeah. Um, and I can already tell you would have been a terrible accountant because you do have a personality. So that's nothing yeah. against you, accountants out there. Um, I I've met one accountant, and she was actually she is my accountant, who I love dearly. She she rides motorcycles and listens to to heavy metal music. Never ever seen that before in an accountant. Um, so we love you, accountants, for listening. Just let's clear the air. Um, but Christy, no, so, so happy to have you on the cool side of the business, yes. the flow, <laughs> the operations, getting things out the door. Um, I remember my first time walking into a massive manufacturing facility and just being overwhelmed and taken aback by just the flow of everything. Like it, it's amazing when you look at that scale, think of like a, an Amazon facility, mm -hmm. things just like happening everywhere. It's beautiful. It's like, it's like a work of art. And it, uh, it really yeah. is. <laughs> So I, I feel you. And I, so I want to unpack this. So you, you got into it. You are on the finance side. You're the CFO, the controller. So what are, what are some things that you learned from that experience that kind of got you to here? So what I learned was I, I love numbers, but then there's certain parts of the numbers I don't love because I don't know for people that are accountants and the really super analytical people, they like building models and looking of what is this forecast going to look like and how are we going to get here? And I love being on the other side of those and seeing the end product and reading them. I don't necessarily like to make them. And that's what I noticed when I was at this manufacturing company is I wanted to be out on the floor and watch how many parts are coming off this machine. If I ran 
this part and then I ran this other part over here that's really not supposed to be manufactured for two or three weeks, I would cut down on time to set up the machine because it's very similar. And so I started moving things around like that and it helped with efficiency and that way of getting product and out the door. Customers were happy because we could fulfill things sometimes a little bit early, not too early because people don't want it sitting on their shelf either. But yeah, I, I would say that that was the fun part of it where I kind of started seeing, oh, wait a second. I can kind of marry finance and operations together, and make a really cool product out of this that I, I'm helping them with. That's awesome. I, I have to know, just a personal question. Do you do this kind of stuff when you like make yourself lunch at home? Like no. Be as efficient as possible. You don't? Okay, 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 wait. Let's, <laughs> let's go back for a second. It, yes, to the point where how many days I'm I eat popcorn for lunch or a PBJ sandwich because that's the amount of time that I have between calls and different things that I'm working on. So there's that part of it, yes. And then dinner, I have to force myself to all right, we're having a legit meal, it's not crackers and peanut butter because that's efficient and gets you back out to where you need to be. <laughs> That's funny. This is, that's when I knew I had like a, an operations nerd problem when I was like, I was literally like timing myself like, okay, if I got the peanut butter first, mm -hmm. and then I got the jelly and then I put it on this way, like, I actually saved three seconds. I'm like, okay, intervention time. Like we, we have a serious problem here. <laughs> we need to stop this. Um, okay. I'm, I'm glad you're not as bad as me, but yeah. it, it, now, it shows up. <laughs> <laughs> it has to, right? If you love it, it will come through. That's passion. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. So you learned all this and, and you see that you love the op side more than the actual number side, um, which I think most people would agree with. So now you take that into consulting, helping other companies understand both marrying the operations, their processes, their systems to the numbers and the finances. What, what made you transition from where you were to now this role of helping other companies? Some of it came by trial and error and also from conversations with people. I used to network a lot because I, I enjoy meeting people and hearing their stories and what their company does. From that, I learned that a lot of people, they may have a controller or they may have a bookkeeper, but they didn't necessarily have the right systems and processes in their accounting department. Mm -hmm. And because I know that world well, and I still do fractional CFO work for a handful of clients and some accounting here and there, but seeing this part that was missing and saying, wait a second, what if I come in and I'm going to work with your CFO, your controller, whomever's in your accounting department, and let's figure out what workflows we need to put into place so your bills are getting paid faster, your, your customers are paying you in a more timely manner. What does that look like? And that's kind of what, through trial and error of doing different things with various companies, kind of birthed what I'm doing now. Mm, that's interesting because I think a lot of a lot of small business owners, um, they kind of tend to push that stuff aside where, you know, the cash flow and the actual mm -hmm. collection of, of money. And I've seen more people get in like really rough positions because they just didn't want to deal with the collection and they had, right. they had revenue, but they didn't have the cash flow and they weren't collecting on it. They didn't want to follow up with the customers. So talk to me a little bit about how you help people with their accounting department, with their cash flow. What are you, what are you looking for when you're going in to work with a new client? First thing I'll look at is what is your open accounts receivable? How much do you have sitting out there that's uncollected? How many days has it been? Is, or do you have a handful of things that are 90 plus days out there? And is there a reason why? Is your contracts that you set up, you tell people, hey, it's you know 60 to 90 days, you can pay us. Are you taking money up front? Kind of walking through the whole way of what they're thinking today as far as the process or I get and speaking to some of the sales too of when you're selling a product or a service how are you selling it today and then what do we need uh, from the reverse side of things and work backwards of I know I need x dollars to be able to just run the company on a monthly basis these are what my overhead expenses are they're pretty flat these aren't going to change and then build in a buffer for things that could come up that you, you know, it's the rainy day nest egg on the off chance that you need and helping the, put those cash flows into place um, to really determine how we need our processes to flow. So that's kind of the first part of it and really digging in on a pretty granular level of 
what they do and then making adjustments from there and then testing whatever those adjustments are that we make and seeing how that's working. Or are, are we getting money coming in faster now? Have we changed the whole process of how money's collected? And now it's not a problem at all. And we have different problems that may show up and now we can go fix those. Mm. I'm curious as you're, as you're describing that, why don't small business owners do that? I, I don't know. I think what I've seen is, and I still don't know the full answer because it doesn't seem to be enough consistency yet to say it's one single problem. It's a myriad of a uh, multiple issues of one. A lot of times it's just the business owner themselves trying to do everything. They haven't maybe gotten to the part where it makes sense to hire somebody and they get so I know full, like their time is so full with maybe shipping a product out the door or fulfilling the service that they're doing that following up with invoices or making sure that, Hey, I, I see you an invoice, you know, three weeks ago, I haven't gotten paid yet. Just the time to be able to get that done gets put on the back burner because they're trying to continually fulfill whatever service or product they're, they're offering. Hmm. So I see that as one. And then the other is the systems that they have in place. Some people are just using Excel still and they haven't moved on to something like, click, are you that person? No, what? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of people that use Excel to make invoices still because they're in the very startup phase and maybe they don't have anybody that can speak to, hey, I need to quit set up QuickBooks. How do I do that? I'm not an accountant, but I'm really good at selling my product out here. And I have a friend that does that. All of his, He's a graphic designer and makes all of his invoices in Photoshop and they look beautiful. But the time to be able to make the invoices, it's it's time at the end of the day and there isn't an easy way to you know, send another PDF version of like, hey, pay me, or here's a link to pay me via ACH or credit card or however you want to do it. And that's a big thing too, is when you want your customer to pay, you want to make it as easy as possible for them. I'm a little bit speechless over here. Um, <laughs> after what you just said, I've never heard that. Uh, Photoshop, yeah. or I've heard Excel. I've seen people do that. And to, to, or word, you know, to, to some extent I, I can let that slide, but the Photoshop thing, you kind of blowing my mind. So, all right, we need to, we need to transition then. Yes. Because I, I hardcore judged that scenario, but more people are probably in that boat. So what, what are you, what are we doing for systems and processes to, to start, I guess, regaining control of our accounting and more importantly, our cash flow and our collection of invoices. Mm -hmm. First thing, I mean, QuickBooks is what everybody knows, love or hate them. That's the software that's out there. There are some competitors that offer services and they are cheaper, but at the end of the day, you're eventually going to have to go to QuickBooks anyway. So something like a FreshBooks or a Wave that's cheaper, but doesn't give you really financial statements. It's more just for the invoicing part of it. Your accountant's going to need that information and you don't want to have a software that's just making invoices. And then you're keeping track of all your expenses and income on an Excel spreadsheet. So moving towards QuickBooks and you can start with a very basic version QuickBooks does have a service now where if you can't find a bookkeeper to manage your books for you, they do it. Highly don't recommend it, but it's it's not the best. And it's better if you can find somebody that has that skill set, whether they're local or somebody like me. I work with people all over the United States, but you get to see me live in person on a Zoom call or whatnot. And we get to walk through things. There's the education part of what are your financial statements telling you? And I still think QuickBooks is the best route to go. And if you can, like I said, start at the cheaper version of it and then work your way up to what you'll need eventually, it's it's the best way because it's going to capture what you need and it will tell the story of how your business is doing. Yeah. And one quick note, um, QuickBooks is actually less expensive than Photoshop for anybody who was between the two. Yes, so, <laughs> good call out. <laughs> so you're going to want to look at that. Uh, neither of them are a sponsor of this show, but we are open to sponsors, both of you. So just, you know, putting that out there. Um, okay, so. Send all we, emails to Brandon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Please, QuickBooks, send me your emails. Um, no, I, I do love QuickBooks. Use them for over the years. And uh, one of the things that I loved about QuickBooks, but more importantly, just having professional accounting software, I'm an accounting idiot. 
and I, I have no shame in saying that the first, my first hire was actually a bookkeeper. I worked with, um, I worked with an outside third party firm. I had a CPA and a bookkeeper and every single month she sent me through my QuickBooks. She kept me out of jail. First of all, thank you. Love it. Um, this is the motorcycle riding, hard metal, uh, uh, listening accountant. She sent me the financial statements that I needed to look at the numbers I needed to know. And she helped me understand them. And this was, you know, uh, it was not a, small business. It was a seven figure business, but I'm again, financial idiot. So when you're working with people, whether it's fractional CFO, um, or some other capacity, just helping them understand their, their finances. Um, what are, what's really important for you to convey to people and for you, what's important for them to understand about their numbers so that they can run their business better. I always start with the profit and loss statement first, because that's what is the easiest for business owners to read. Here's all my income that came in. These are all my expenses that went out. It's determining what those expenses are, how to properly categorize them. And then I like to dig in a deeper level to say what percentage of my sales are going to these expenses. So a good example is how many times people spend a lot on marketing and advertising and it doesn't yield a return. And we really want to dive into that number. If I say, hey, you know what? 20% of my income is going towards marketing and marketing gives me one new client a year. And I've spent, you know, half a million dollars on marketing and one new client is $10,000. Okay, well, we need to kind of change something up. And by the way, that's like crazy, ridiculous numbers, but. Well, you're probably not that far off. <laughs> it's, it's probably not that far off sometimes. You need to be able to look at a different strategy and maybe hire a company that that's their specialty to come in and evaluate what does my market want? That's a big part. Travel is always a big thing. What percentage of travel are you spending, you know, working with clients or even using that for marketing the, the whole meals, meals and entertainment. That's always a fun thing with tax code that <laughs> they, they love to get that one. But then there's also a good part of it when working with a CPA as well as they can tell your bookkeeper about, Hey, there's these tax incentives and this is how we want to classify things to make the statements read how we want them to read. So with the P and L that's a lot of times what I do is we'll, we'll go through all of those categories. Do these numbers make sense for you? Hey, I noticed this uh, category went up a lot. I noticed you guys bought this. Um, what, what's going on. And then you got the balance sheet, which, that one, I feel like nobody nobody likes the balance sheet because it it is it can be difficult for a business owner to read, but at the end of the day, it tells a really good story too. And that's everything that your company owns asset wise. Those are things that you can turn to cash quickly and get money on. All of your liabilities, it's credit card debt, it's lines of credit, it's purchases of equipment, cars, et cetera. And then you have the equity that you've put into the company and then the draws that you've taken out of it. Yeah, powerful documents if you know what to do with them. And if you don't, seek guidance because <laughs> that's that's the most you said the numbers tell a story. And that's really that's really what we're after is what is the story my business is telling me through these numbers? Because more than anything else, whatever your gut feeling is the numbers will reveal it for you. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to toss your website on the screen here because I, I believe you. you can help us understand these documents. So christybarber.com slash resources. Uh, tell me what you got going on on this page. So on that page, I have a downloadable right now that kind of talks through what are systems and processes, what are the right ones for your business, whether you're startup or whether you've been around for a while, and you might need to graduate out of what you're using or reevaluate what you're using different things like that. There's some examples in there of various softwares to use. Looking also at processes, how to get those started. You know, the, you always hear the, the term, I want, you know, best debris or um, best practices. You're like, oh, that's great. What are best practices for my business or for this specific department? And going into those of hey, this is kind of this the standard way of doing it, but we want to bring in what's unique to you. So it could be the culture of your company. You provide a really unique customer experience to your client and you want to make sure that shows up throughout the organization. So we'll want to tweak those processes and add that in there. So it goes into there. There's also some really good blog articles. I just posted one the other day of how to read your financial statements in depth. And that, that'll break through all of it. I also have a YouTube video I'm making of that pretty soon too. So for the people that are more auditory learners versus reading a blog, that, that'll be up. 
But I, I love helping people understand that because it is the story. Yeah, I agree. And I'll make sure Christy sends me all of that stuff, yes. the blog, the YouTube video, uh, and her website with the resources are going to be down below in the show notes, wherever you're watching or listening. So make sure you go check those out to help you further understand your financial knowledge and proficiency in this area to help you grow your business. That's the whole point. You need to, if your business is going to survive, you got to know your finances and understand the numbers and the story that's being told through them. So uh, Christy, I appreciate you coming. I got one last question. And yeah. I think, um, I, I think just to provide clarity around the, the conversation we're having here, is there one common theme or uh, issue that you see that's present when you go in and you consult with companies? Like what is the most common aspect of, of building systems and processes in, in accounting departments that you come across the most? The biggest pain point I see is everybody's doing something slightly different. And oh. so a good example would be, hey, I may have three different ways that bills get paid. And when so-and-so goes on vacation, this person steps in and does it and they do it a different way. And this person does, or if you're training somebody and then all of a sudden you have all these different ways and not to say that any way is bad, but there's always a better way to do things that to get the team aligned on. And that goes down to the point too, of you want to strategically use your employees as best as possible and get them away from a lot of the tactical work, which is data entry things. So you want to be able to find systems that can help them not enter in maybe a thousand line items and it, it helps do that. And then they just come in and they, they check it and make sure all the data is there. So that's the biggest thing I've seen is just, there's all these different ways that people are doing things and we need to get them aligned. You gave me the chills there. Um, <laughs> I think any, any operations nerd gets the heebie jeebies when there's the variance in process. There's a reason it's called standard operating procedures, but yes. it's a different episode for a different day. I really appreciate you coming, Christy. This was awesome. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. For those of you listening, watching wherever you are, first and foremost, go check the description, go work with Christy. At get those questions answered that you have about your systems and processes, about your cash flow, and see if you can tighten that area of your business a little bit. I promise you it'll pay dividends. The next thing you're going to do is subscribe. That's it. Just make sure you're here every single weekday for more bite-sized business advice. Thanks for watching Harmonious at Lunch. We'll see you on the next episode.